Hi folks, welcome to another Wednesday widget. Today we are going to talk about an ultrasonic parts cleaner. I got one about a year ago and it sat on the shelf for about six months. And then I finally had a part, an engraving piece that I had polished that I needed to clean the polish residue out of. And I thought I should finally try that thing out. And I can't believe how well it worked. So for all the, the um, for all of you who already have one of these or, or know what they are, probably not a great video for you, but I was shocked. I know this is a little bit outside of the NYC and Wednesday widget type of material, but this thing was so amazing to me and there are so many uses for it that I'm gonna go ahead and say, if you do anything involving machining or fabrication or cleaning or restoration or old equipment or anything, buy one of these things. Uh, there's a link for the one I'm using in the description below. That's through Amazon. I do get a little kickback if you buy it. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, and then I looked on YouTube. There aren't any other great to the point examples. So we're gonna do two things today. One, as you can see here, we are machining a part on our Tormach PCNC 1100. We're face cutting it with the Superfly end mill and then we are using a 2L ink engraver to engrave a little logo. What we're then going to do, as you can see here, is polish this on progressive sandpaper on top of a granite block, you know, something like 320, 400, 600, 800, 1000, et cetera. You, it's up to you how far you wanna go. And then after we do all that, we're gonna grab some polishing compound. And whether this is aluminum or steel or copper or brass, this is a very easy way to get something to a darn nice finish, usually a mirror finish, if you, uh, if you take your time and do the sanding well and correctly and so forth. The problem, and this is where I first used the uh, machine for, is it's a little bit tricky to get that clean when you're done. Now, yes, for sure, you can use um, acetone or degreaser and scrub it out or Q-tips, but the ultrasonic cleaner makes such easy work of this thing, really does. Now, the other thing we're gonna do is a gun part. This is a epitome of a great example, um, and it probably is similar to something like, say, a carburetor. And this is a 22, part of a 22, it's super fouled up and lead-like, you can see here. And this is where the ultrasonic's great, because not only does it do a good job of cleaning, but you can drop a whole bunch in at once, and Yes, again, you could clean this by hand with, with your finger and a toothbrush or Q-tips and scrubbing it in each end, but the ultrasonic cleaner doesn't care about complex geometries, complex surfaces, hidden nooks, etc. So that's why I think this is a real win, again, given the price. The other thing I wanted to mention is, and this is some, one reason why the thing sat on the shelf for me for so long, is there's so many darn options for cleaning solutions. People mix their own, people buy certain types, people you know, warn you that you're gonna melt your parts if you use the wrong one. And look, the truth is you gotta be careful. You don't wanna put plastic into the thing. And for those of you who know these machines and have comments below on, on lessons learned, hop in below. But I've run a lot of you know, ferrous and non-ferrous parts in here and have not had a problem. Again, just to repeat though, don't put plastic parts in there. And if it's something really valuable or you're concerned about it, Google around and do some homework first. But I am using, as you can see here, the Hornaday cleaner. It just happened to be the one I saw and bought, and this is a concentrate, so it makes a significant amount of stuff. So cost is not a real reason not to run this thing. So we've got two different sets of parts here, an aluminum block that we wanna clean up, and these uh, 22 caliber parts that are all fouled up. Let's drop them in the ultrasonic cleaner here and see what they do. Here is the little cleaner itself. Uh, like I said, there's a link for this in Amazon. This is about $125. Um, you can see it fits, you know, something larger than my fist, but not significantly larger. It fits a lot of things like, you know, for instance, a pistol barrel or 1911 barrel or Glock barrel, etc. cetera. Um, you know, I can't comment um, expertly on what you're getting for when you buy one, but I do know that I have folks who have had a lot of luck with the Harbor Freight one, which is less expensive. And I know when you wanna get bigger ones or tank style ones, you're definitely gonna pay a lot more for the size. And I think there are also just less, fewer out there that are larger, that are sort of junk quality, if you will. The only thing I don't like about the Harbor Freight and likes is they're all plastic. I like that this one is uh, metal. It's got a little wire basket uh, like so. I've got the solution in there. Uh, I've got the temperature up a little bit. You do want it to be uh, warmer. They say something like 35 to 50 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm. And so let's, uh, without further delay here, take a look at some parts and dunk them in. So here are some parts. These should turn out to be um, much nicer, hopefully, when they're cleaned up. But you can see these are pretty gritty and grimy. No reason you couldn't clean them on your own, but you can dump a bunch of parts or stuff like this and have them come out clean. 
For those of you that are wondering, yeah, these are um, legal silencer baffles from a 22 caliber suppressor or silencer. And so let's throw them in the tank and see how they do. I am hoping to get rid of these bubbles because I really want you to see the instant you start the ultrasonic vibration action, it starts working immediately. So let's set the timer up here for a few minutes. And yeah, you can see in the back left one, the white stuff is just flaking away. And that's why I have to say that's so amazing about this. I've done this now on a lot of different types of parts. I've done it on some old machine parts I've had to restore. It won't get rust off of parts, but it'll get grime and, and residue off. Pretty amazing. Like I said, I'm passionate about it. I think it's worthwhile to do a video on it, even though it's not so much instructional, but it is technology in our hand that, hey, my grandfather sure didn't have, especially for this kind of price. Um, you can apparently, let, you can lay them in too long, but I find five or 10 minutes never really hurts anything. I can't remember what prompted it, but a fellow from Germany, and if you're watching this, uh, uh, hello, um, emailed me about ultrasonic cleaners. I think he was doing his PhD on them, and he was talking about how, and if I'm getting this wrong, I apologize, that the first, you know, fraction of a second, like, you know, 10,000th of a second, the shock wave increases the temperature to some, like, five-digit number, like 10,000 degrees, again, for one millionth of a second or something like that. But it made me realize just how bonkers scientific these things are. Anyways, let's let them fast forward here and we'll see what they look like here after about five minutes. Okay, pulled them out. I just uh, blew them off with air, or rin rinsed them in fresh water and then blew them off with compressed air just to get that liquid off. And again, here's kind of what they used to look like. Pretty grimy inside and look at how beautiful they came out. I think it's spectacular. This is the best one, uh, the worst one, you know, did leave some residue inside. Uh, you could probably put it in for longer. I'm not particularly worried about it, um, but most of them look spectacular. And just so you know, these are all sort of a tarnish discolored from the factory, if you will. So don't think of that as being anything. This one, I'm actually wondering if it ran so long that it started to uh, you know, reoxize a new layer or something, or for folks who may know more about this stuff, let me know. But um, you can see, dump them in, come back in five or 10 minutes and you got clean parts. Uh, you don't even have to get your hands dirty. That is a win. Okay, let's grab our aluminum part and dunk that. I just changed the water actually for the first time. Hopefully some cleaner water will help us see the cleaning action a little better. This stuff mixes 40 to 1, 40 ounces of water in here. There's a half ounce and and foot one ounce. Okay, nice fresh liquid. Let's drop this aluminum part in here. And again, the point of this isn't so much to clean the part as it is hopefully you'll be able to see the stuff lift right off of it. In fact, let's zoom in a little more. Okay, here's the big moment. Let's hope this isn't much of hype. Awesome, that's exactly what I wanted you guys to see. So, uh, with that, that's sort of a wrap. Um, this is a great tool for me and that's why I'm sharing it in this video. As you guys know, when I talked about in the video on how I quote machine work and goes into how I run my shop, a lot of times I'm a one man shop. Sometimes I've got some help. And being able to dump parts into this and know if I come back in 10 minutes, they'll be clean or pretty darn clean is huge. And knowing you can, uh, when you're restoring machines, I've got so much of that work to do now with that bridge port I just picked up at auction. This thing's gonna get used a ton a great tool and that's why I thought you guys might be interested if you haven't seen it already for 125 bucks uh, or more or less depending on what size you want and quality and all that good stuff so hope you guys uh, have enjoyed this don't worry Wednesday widgets aren't going to turn into some lame tool review they'll be back to the good old stuff soon I've got a lot to do I've got a, a Tormach enclosure to install which I'll do a build video on I got to get the fourth axis up and running and that bridge port and the welder and uh, well lots of stuff so as always, folks, I appreciate your time watching these videos. If you've enjoyed it, comment below, thumbs up, share, like, all that good stuff. Otherwise, see you soon, folks. Not a uh, half-bad-looking part, if I do say so myself. 
almost too shiny here with the lights I use for filming. Let's see if I can get my face in it here. All right, enough having fun, folks. See you soon.